My name's Henry. I'm the Marine Manager at Hailing Island Sailing Club. This video is looking at how to rig your laser, specifically using one of our club lasers that we have here at HISC. There are many different ways that you can rig the boat. There's different systems you can use. We've got quite simple systems on our boats, uh, but that's what we're going to look at and that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So we'll just start off looking at the different masts that are available on our boats. There are three different sizes of sail that come with the laser, the 4.7, the radial and the standard. Basically the 4.7 is the smallest size, the radial is a medium and the standard is the largest. In terms of who should be using what, the, a, large, a large man really wants to be on a standard if they're competent and they're, they're competent with their sailing. The radial is for, um, it's designed for ladies really, but also lighter people. Also, less experienced sailors might want to use the radial sail. It's a really nice sail to use, really manageable. And in the 4.7, it maybe you're a youngster, a teenager out on the laser for the first time, or perhaps you're very light. That's a really good sail size for you. So we've got those three options there. With those different sail sizes, the mast that goes into the sail comes in two sections. And it's only the bottom half of that mast which changes size when you use a different sail size. So the 4.7 has a bottom section there, that's the smallest one. The radial has the middle size bottom section and the standard has the largest one. The top half of the mast, the top section, always remains the same size. So we're just swapping the bottom section for the size of sail that we're using. When we come to put the mast together, it's important we get them lining up correctly. So with your top section, grab it close to the bottom here. We can see we've got these black plastic sections that indicates where the mast is going to go together. And I'm specifically looking for this rivet, or maybe sometimes there'll be a red arrow here. Ours has worn off. Either one of those is what you're looking for with the top section. So I'm going to get my top section. And I'm just going to lay it on the floor for the time being. I've, I've got lots of space here today. I'm going to rig out the floor. You can rig on your boat, whatever the space allows you to do. And I'm going to go for our standard bottom section. Now what I want to make sure I'm doing is that this rivet or my red arrow lines up with this gooseneck here or this kicker. And that will make sure my masts are all in the right line. They're designed to bend a specific way. So we want to make sure we get that right. I'm just going to come to put them together. And this can be a little bit tight sometimes. So I'm going to just give it a bit of a wiggle. And then just double check, making sure my river and my equipment at the bottom is all still lined up nicely. And that looks, that looks pretty good to me. So we'll just put that down and we'll just get over to our sail. So this is our standard sail. Gonna unroll it from the tubing. And then with our plastic tubing, we can just discard that. We don't need that anymore. Now, when I'm putting the sail on the mast, it's gonna make your life a lot easier if you make sure that the luff tube here where the mast is gonna go in, that's kind of pointing into the wind, and the rest of the sail is kind of trailing out behind you, so downwind if you like. Make sure the sail's pointing the same direction as the kicker and the gooseneck at the bottom. Put the sail onto the mast, and then it should just be a case of pulling that straight down. We really want to make sure that the sail goes all the way onto the mast at the top. It's quite easy for the very top part to get stuck. There we go. And again, checking that the sail is going the right way with all this equipment down at the bottom. We're going to put the mast into the boat. Before we do that, this part of the mast here is what's going to go into the boat. Make sure there's no sand on it. Any sand on the bottom of the mast going into the mast hole, um, that's going to create like a sandpaper effect. And that's going to eventually make a hole in your boat. So make sure it's nice and clear of sand. To lift it up, take a nice wide grip on the mast 
and lift the sail up with one hand right overhead. If the sail's very heavy, lean the sail into the wind and that will make it lighter. I don't really need to do that today, it's not too heavy, so I'm just going to lift it up and put it into the boat. This situation that we've got here now with the sail flappy and loose, we need to sort that out and we need to get the boom on as quickly as we can to make sure that we're not doing any damage to our sail. So we'll find the boom, we'll find the hole in the boom and we'll put that on the gooseneck. We'll then make our way round to the other end of the boom where we should have a hook at the end of the, at the, end of the boom here. Grab our sail. I managed to get myself in a bit of a twist and get that hook on. Some people might have a clue strap here. We don't have clue straps on our boats, but you might have like a Velcro strap that goes around the boom. There should be a piece of rope attached to a pulley at this point. This is our outhaul. Let's get hold of our outhaul and we're going to make our way back round the boat until we're back up by the gooseneck. And at this point, we need to take a quick look at what's going on under the gooseneck here. We've got two different ropes. There's a, a pulley on a rope and a pulley on a bungee. We're going to tackle, we're going to go with this pulley on the rope first. So the outhaul goes through there. And you'll notice I'm keeping the tension on this the whole time to stop the sail flapping as much as I can. Make sure that nothing else is in the way down below. Come down on to this block on the floor. Now you can see I'm doing my best to make sure things aren't getting tangled. The rope's coming down the right hand side of the kicker so that's not going to get tangled later and that rope can come through that block and then there's another cleat here. The outhaul is going to go through that cleat and that's nice and secure for the time being. We're then going to move on to the downhaul or the Cunningham. So there's two ropes at this point. There's a short rope and there's a long rope. So our short rope is going to come up the other side of the boom. It's going to go through this hole in the sail and we're going to come back down and get hold of this um, pulley with the piece of bungee on it. And what I'm going to try and do is just poke it through the top and there should be enough slack to put a bowline in. You can use a figure of eight if there's not enough slack, but bowline's easier to undo at the end of the day, which is always good when you want to get for a nice refreshing drink at the bar. The other, the longer piece of rope, as you've just seen, is going to go actually through the pulley there, through the pulley on the deck, and then through this cleat on the deck as well, and we can just cleat that off. Now there are different ways to do this. You can have both of these bits of rope on the same side of this gooseneck and that will allow you to pull the sail down further but what it will do over time is damage your sail more. So we, we like to take it either side to actually restrict people pulling their downhaul on too much to make our sails last a bit longer. You can have totally different systems with more purchase but we like to keep it simple and that's what we've got. The kicker is our last control that we need to get on. So make sure it can be a bit confusing again that there's no tangles in the kicker pretty sure there's no tangles looks like there might be one but we'll, we'll find out when it's on and then this could be a bit of a challenge because we've got this little metal piece here which wants to go in here and slide down but as you can see i haven't actually got enough distance or the boom won't reach the kicker so the trick that we're going to use here is I'm going to take my main sheet and I'm going to pull my main sheet in as tight as you can, get the kicker and then you've got more than enough reach to get onto the boom there and then you can let it out and your kicker's attached. So the kicker's on, the outhaul's on and the downhaul's on. It's up. To, there are different ways we can finish these ropes here. If all you know how to do is a figure of eight you can put a figure of eight in. If you know how to do a daisy chain, this is the best thing we can do. So make a loop, 
poke the middle of the rope through the loop and then just start to pull that tight and then repeat that process creating the daisy chain or what you might want to do we'll just get rid of the figure of eight is you might just want to put a bowling in it doesn't really matter too much the daisy chain is gives you a nice handle to hold on to if you do want to put any of these controls on uh, really a bowling or a figure of eight is, is totally fine before we go sailing just get hold of the main sheet and it's always good just to go through it and coil it up like I'm doing now it's very easy for this rope to get tangled so make sure there's no tangles in it that looks good chuck it down in the bottom of the boat there's a bung on the inside of the boat here we want to make sure that's in so that's good and then the most important thing to check before we go sailing is this plastic bung in the back of the boat here this should really be the first thing you check or the first thing you put in when you're looking to go sailing and the last thing you check before you go out double triple quadruple check that your bug is in or it will be a very short maybe quite a sinky sail and that pretty much is how to rig our laser we've got our dagger board which is on the floor over here we put that in the boat as well um, and apart from that we're pretty much ready to go so hopefully you found this video useful if you've got any questions give us a call or, or feel, feel free to get in touch with us thank you very much